Welcome to Lesson 4 of Bible Tech 401, Advanced Tools for Bible Study and Teaching. We're getting a little bit away from the Bible Study and Teaching in this lesson, which will be a little bit about what I said it will be about, and then a lot about what was going to be the next lesson, and now it's going to be two, the more I've looked at it. I laid all this course out some time ago and devoted one lesson to Lesson 4 to places where I store text very briefly. Uh, a very simple example of that is drafts, and another example of that is in Raycast. I have a little Command F2 keyboard shortcut that brings up some notes for stuff that I just want to grab real fast. The app drafts I use instead of Apple Notes. It syncs really well. It has a couple more tools that I need for find and replace when I'm on my phone. And it's just a good place to store stuff kind of temporarily. And if I forget it and leave it there, no big deal. And maybe I'll search for it later. I don't have really any organization in drafts. I realized, however, that that's really all the lesson would need to be. And I need more time to talk about Markdown. So this lesson's really going to be Markdown Lesson 1. What is Markdown? Markdown is a plain text markup language Instead of hypertext markup language, we have a plain text markup language. I'm going to show you now an app called Ulysses. It has three panels. I really did like it for a long time. I ended up finding it was a little too proprietary. I wanted to have my markdown files, my text files, in my own format in a plain text ASCII, A-S-C-I-I -I format that I could access in any app. I think maybe one of the best ways to show you what Markdown is, is to show you a Markdown document. So I have placed the entire recent issue of Themelios, for which I am now the designer. I do it three times a year as part of my design work with Forward Design. I love to use my design work to serve the church, and I was happy to get this little contract job. The whole document massive Word document, almost 130,000 words, a bunch of scholarly articles and a bunch of book reviews at the end. I dragged and dropped the Word document here into Ulysses. You see style here. You see this is bold and big, and you see this is italicized, and you see I can make this a little bigger, actually, and I might as well get rid of all of those empty hard returns at the beginning because actually this is just plain text and this is going to make more sense as time passes. Okay, there we go. Now we got a nice clean document. You see some footnotes, which not all Markdown apps can handle. You see some bolds. Do I see any bolds? Well, I can make something bold and this is how you do it. In Markdown, you use double asterisks around something. It can be one word or a number of words. It could be a whole paragraph if you want it to be. You use uh, double asterisks to make something bold. You use single asterisks to make something, anything in between the two asterisks, italicized. You use, why is there still a bunch of empty hard returns up here? I don't know how they got here getting rid of them. I hope this is a fun, enjoyable watch for you. <laughs> Come on. I think I got it now. There we go. And you use hashtags to indicate the heading level. Watch what happens when I use another hashtag. I have it set to make the text smaller. Another hashtag. This is a heading three, heading four, heading five. I think I go to heading six. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to keep that heading one because it's a title. This is a way to rapidly style documents. And the other value of Markdown is that it's all in plain text. So I could grab all this text, Command-A or Control-A on Windows, Command-C, Control-C on Windows. And if I move over to Visual Studio Code, you can see this is all here in plain text. I could save this as a text file. And that's basically future-proof. We're never going to get away from text files. I mean, I can't imagine a situation in which we would. I can move from app to app, and there's no proprietary formatting. Yes, in Ulysses, it looks like this. Let me pull Raycast down in here so you can see a little better what I write. Yes, I have Ulysses styled in the preferences so that the markup looks a certain way so that the heading one looks, it's 3XL, and it's bold, and it's a particular color. 
but I could style it any way I want within the app. It doesn't matter. When I move over to another app where the styling is different, it'll make it look the way it's set to look there, but the plain text remains the same. That's really the key. And it gives me a lot of power. I want to show you an example of a couple more styles and how to do them. Okay, in Markdown, if I have a document, whether I'm writing it or styling it, there is an implicit character here. And now you see it when I select it. It uses the Pilcrow symbol, the paragraph symbol. That means there's a hard return. There's a new line. So there are paragraph styles and character styles in Markdown as there are in any serious app like Word or InDesign. You might never have used them, but let me use an analog that you may have used. In HTML, you wrap paragraphs in paragraph tags. The paragraph opener tag is right here. The paragraph closer tag is right here. And actually, in your ASCII text file, you could have two paragraph tags right next to each other, an end paragraph and begin paragraph. And your parser will know that you're starting a new paragraph here. Okay. On a typewriter, that's a literal hard return. On a computer, it's hitting enter. In Markdown, Markdown knows that whatever paragraph style you use at the beginning of a paragraph ends whenever there's a hard return. So I could make all of this the paragraph style heading two or heading three to make it a little easier to see. And now it knows, any Markdown parser will, that this is the end of heading three. Okay, that's because it's a paragraph style. There aren't that many paragraph styles in Markdown. It's just the simple ones that everybody would need. Heading one, heading two, heading three, heading four, heading five, and probably up to heading six. I don't think I have a heading seven, no. The other key one is block quote. I can hit the greater than symbol, and I usually put a space after that, and Markdown knows to handle that. Uh, by It won't put a space in the final document which you'll see. I hope this is not too confusing. Everything from here to the end, where I have a hard return, symbolized by a pilcrow here, is going to get that paragraph style. Okay, so let me show you why this matters. And, and I'm going to prove to you the kind of thing that makes Markdown so valuable. You would assume that if you look at a Word document like this, that the authors of it have made this a block quote. But let's imagine, and this is a very, very common thing, they haven't. Actually, all they did was take plain text and move it over. They used tab to move it over. I can use tab to move it over a little further. This document is large, and so it takes a little while for things to happen, which is another reason I don't like to work in Word. Okay, so I encounter this. It should be styled as block quote in Word. That's what should be happening. They should have gone over here and chosen block quote. But let's imagine that they didn't. So my job is going to be to go through Ulysses or some other Markdown editor and add those block quote tags. The very fastest way is going to be to use plain text rather than to have to triple click on it, right click on it, then choose some style or something. No, I want to do everything from the keyboard if I possibly can. And I can go all throughout this entire document and style it appropriately for preparation for export somewhere. This is so, so key. I use Markdown all the time. In the next lesson, I'll actually show you in some more detail why it's so valuable to use Markdown for something like Themelios, or let me give you a little hint, a doctrinal statement. Frequently, I run across this situation. I'm given a website, and I told, I've got to take this text and turn it into another website, a page on another website but they're not giving me styled HTML that I can actually use. I get this weird mixture of non-styles and messed up styles and who knows what. If I know how to use Markdown, then I can grab all that and paste it and then very quickly whip through. I know these are uh, heading twos, so I stick with copy and paste two hashtags in front of those heading twos. I also note, for example, that the uh, the scripture references are not done appropriately. The scripture references, and this I'll do three because that's a subhead of the church. 
I can do this while I'm talking to you. (laughs) And it's not that hard because it's just so simple. And then very quickly, I did it all in front of you. I'll get rid of that because that's not part of the doctrinal statement. I have a style document. I noticed that they're using hyphens or minus signs here. So I can use regular expressions, which I'll talk about in lesson seven, to search for anything between zero and nine, followed by a hyphen, followed by anything between zero and nine, and whatever is in the parentheses, it can replace, oh, this is tough to explain, whatever it finds in the first search, the parentheses, it'll replace with itself. And then I'll put in an N dash, which is what you're supposed to have in number ranges. And then whatever it found in the second search and bam, now I have dashes in the verse ranges. I could also make all of these italic by putting the asterisks before and after everything. I can do a bunch to this that is just really, I don't know, difficult and obstreperous. Can I say that? Stroppy is what they say in Britain to do in Word because I'm dealing with a bunch of extraneous stuff, whereas here I'm just dealing with plain text, and I can style it all in plain text, and it's hard-coded into the text now. And now with my Raycast Markdown to HTML converter, bam, it converted this all to HTML. It adds a bunch of uh, head text, which I don't really need or want, because I'm actually sticking this into a visual page builder, but look at my nicely styled HTML. I previously had two hashtags before this, and it knew to turn it into this, H2 opening tag and H2 closing tag. If this looks all impossibly nerdy, I just beg you as I end this video to consider the number of times you have to style a document in some way. If you're a writer of any kind, even if you're just a pastor, you are styling documents and handing them out. Do you want people to be able to quickly scan this document and know what you're talking about, what genre of literature they're reading, to know where the breaks are, where the headings are. Most people I've seen don't give any thought to this. There's no difference between heading two and heading three and heading four, so they don't use the advantage, the tool of communication that that is. They don't think about how their document looks. Somebody gave me a resume, my good friend Jared, Let's see if I can find it here. Hammond, Jared, resume. Yes, and the original one he gave me, you know, it just wasn't styled very nicely. You couldn't whip through it very quickly. So I gave him this, a nice clear heading to. Very nice, nicely styled, obvious. You go from profile to experience. And then this is sort of a subhead. In fact, it's called subhead there. Um, I style everything in a way that makes it easily scannable. I get pretty frustrated when I go to church and somebody makes a document for me and they haven't given any thought to these things because I feel like people are already bad enough readers. Why not use the conventions that have been so elegantly formulated by our culture, Western culture, to help communicate the truth to them? Block quotes the same. I love my block quotes. So on my blog, there's tons of block quotes. I don't follow the rule that it has to be three lines. I often will do one line or two lines because I think it's more important to communicate visually. Okay, here's a quote from somebody else than it is to follow the fussy rule. The rules are there for a reason. I'm not disputing them all. But that one I violate all the time because I think the value of communication uh, very quickly to people outweighs the value of following those rules, which might be important for laying out books. I can lay out whole books. And I'm going to show you in the next lesson on Markdown why this is so valuable. I think you're going to get it if you put a little time into it. Daring Fireball is the person who came up with this, I guess. I don't know. He's the one online that I found years ago. All of my documents now start in Markdown. I can get them from Markdown into any format, which, Lord willing, I'll show you in the next lesson. I hope this one whet your appetite. I would find it maybe a little frustrating to be taught only this much, but trust me, if you'll stick with me through the end of the next lesson, you'll see why Markdown is so valuable.